Hey everyone, I hope you all are safe and doing good. So, in the series of learning C++ programming language, we are discussing standard template library. Like vectors we have discussed till now, right? Same like vector we have pair in STL, right? So, we will discuss in this video what is pair, why we use it, how to use it, some member function of pair and uh, declaration, initialization of pair and all. Everything about pair we will discuss in this video. Okay. What is a pair? First of all, we will discuss what is a pair in this standard template library. So, see in general uh, meaning if I say like a pair of a uh, marker, I have a pair of marker, like I have two marker, pair means like two things, okay, pair of shoes, pair of uh, jeans, pair of shirt, like this, right, you understand the general meaning of a pair, this pair, set of two values or two things, right. I can say uh, this is a pair or not, like this is a pair or not. I have one as ink and one is marker. Yes, it is a pair. Although the things I have are not same, they are different type, but still it is a pair, right? So a pair, it combines, we can say it combines like two values, right? And that values can be of same type or different type, right? I hope you got what is a pair, right? So in your term, you can write down proper definition of pair, right or not, I'll, it's okay, I'll tell you proper definition also. But first, let's understand this pair. Okay, so now, so in STL, in standard template library, like vector is a container, I have told you, or you can say it, it was a class. So same pair is also a container in STL. Or we can also say pair is a class. So we can create object of this class, we can create pairs. Right. So whenever you are going to create pair that are known as you can say object of pair class. Right. So let's see the syntax first. How you will write, write down, how you will declare a pair. We simply write pair in small letter and here we write data type. Data type 1 and data type 2 because it is a set of two values or two elements of same type or maybe of different type, we can say of potentially different types, right. And here we just write down the pair name, that's it. This is simple declaration or you can say uh, this is how we are going to define a pair. This is data type of first element, data type of second element, right. Like if I write pair first int next is string and pair name I am just taking p. So we have a object, pair object P, right, which can contain two values of int and string type. And this is first, this is second, right, and the order is fixed. The first, how you can access this thing, this value, first value, we just write down the name of the pair, dot and first. So whatever value you will store here, that it will give you that thing, and P dot second, it will give you that thing. So order is fixed. First, second, right? These are keyword first and second. This is how we are going to access this thing. So I'll show you this thing with the help of program, right? Now, why we need this thing, a pair? See, whenever you want to uh, store, whenever you want to return from a function two values, so we can use in that case pair, right? Or if you want to store a pair of you know related values we can use this thing like we use dictionary we use tuple the header file for this pair is utility we use utility header we can we can see it is a container class which is defined in standard template library pair provides you a way to store two heterogeneous type of object as a single unit as a single object Right now, how to use this? Let me just show you this thing with some, you know, uh, practically with some programs. Okay, so let's create a new file. We have pair cpp right? So let's include what first headers. I use stream, and if you are using pair, let's include utility header and namespace std. Okay, now first we are going to create a pair, right? So just write down this pair, see, template, this is a class, right? So let's write down this pair. 
and here you have to write down see type name t1 type name t2 so struct this holding two object of arbitrary type so first let's take int and float right now name of the pair i'm taking p that's it right now how we are going to initialize this pair the values one is directly here we can write down the initializer list that is also fine like in these brackets we can simply write down the first is int so first write down some value like 23 int then float so i'm writing something like this okay it should be like point right so i have given two values 23 and this int and float so this is our one way to initialize a pair now how to access these values we have two keyword first and second so how to access if you want to access the first value then name of the pair followed by dot operator and then first right then let's put some space and then p dot second right and Let's run this and see what output you will get. Let's run this and see you are getting 2356.89, right? So this is how you can access the values. Now, this is one way of initialization of this pair. Second way is we can initialize this. We can uh, use something like this rather than initializing here. We can do what? Let's create another pair having int and string two values and name of the pair is p2 let's take this one is p1 right so it should be p1 p1 p2 we have a function make pair right using that also we can initialize these things like i can do something like this i have created this thing now p2 equal to i can just call this function uh, make pair right and here i can give the value like 12 comma and string like any name i'm giving gen something like this and same if you want to print then we can use here p2 dot first name of this is because p2 and this is also p2 rather than this let's comment out this thing and i'm just going to print the values of second vector 12 and gen right now make pair is a function see make pair is a function here you can create a pair without explicitly you know telling these data types intent string but how here i have used this make pair function to initialize p2 this is also fine but here i have given these uh, data types explicitly but if you don't want to give th this thing that also uh, there is also one way using make pair function what is that way see i'm going to create another pair p3 suppose so p3 equal to it's not correct i'm going to uh, do some correction here p3 equal to just call uh, this this uh, what we can say make pair function and give some values suppose i'm giving here not jenny let's take like rahul now don't comment out this thing like i'm wondering who is rahul rahul is just a name or we can say a student right do not try to find out any relationship with me rahul comma any like i'm giving 89 or r this thing right but it see identifier p3 is undefined right so here just write down auto this keyword so it will automatically take these uh, data types first is string second is character right and it will create a pair p3 so if you want to print this p3 let's just comment out this thing and p3 dot first and p3 dot second let's comment out this line and now run this and what it should give rahul and r see rahul and r right so without explicitly specifying uh, these data types we can use make pair function to create a pair okay we can use another a pair to initialize another pair okay this is how see we can do this thing 
uh, we have three pair now p1 p2 p3 so let's create another pair i have a pair if you want to initialize suppose p4 pair with the same values of p1 right so the type would be same intent float and in the same order right so let's just copy paste this thing and pair i'm just taking pair int float and p4 p4 and in bracket p1 i want to initialize p4 with p1 so p4 and p1 pair are having same value now so let's just print what p4 values p4 dot first and p4 dot second and it should print 23 and this 56.89 c same values so using another pair also we can initialize a pair so there are some ways different different ways of you know initializing a pair creating a pair and direct with the direct assignment also possible like let's let's create another pair so i have another pair bool comma string two types i have and p6 so we can do direct assignment like p6 equal to what we can do sorry p p6 dot first equal to bool so either zero or one or true or false right i don't know it will take true or false the keyword but let's see let's try out true right and p6 dot second is equal to string so uh, i'm just uh, writing here like uh, ankit right and semicolon so if you want to print these values why p6 it should be p5 right because till p4 we have created pair na? so why is it p5 let's take p5 so we are going to uh, you now print p5 and here also p5 this is direct assignment we are directly assigning the values to first and second element i don't know it will work or not let's run one and the name ankit so one like true is one okay also true so automatically it will decode it to uh, one so this is also possible now one more thing with this is this is what member function of pair member function of obviously i have told you pair is a class so in that we are having some member function and those member function we can use with pair object so we have one more function member function that is swap if you want to swap the values of two pair pair object we can use swap function let's see that thing also suppose i have but keep this thing in your mind if you want to swap the content of two pair p1 and p2 so the data type should be same right of first and second element right because p1 dot first would be swapped with p2 dot first p2 p1 dot second would be swapped with p2 dot second so the data type should be same i don't know if you will take different data if it will work or not let's try out this thing also because i'm trying out this thing first time right now so let's run we have p1 and p2 okay let's swap these thing so how uh, let's just first comment out all the other things so we have a swap function so on p1 i'm just going to call the swap function and in bracket let's pass p2 okay sorry and semicolon now after swapping let's print p1 and p2 only p1 and p2 these two things i don't know it will work or not okay it will give definitely it will give an error see the red line here <laughs> okay see here no matching function for call to pair swap because here we have int int but here we have float and string so we cannot swap float with string so here it should be same let's do this let's convert this float to string or take this string here and here let's take what let's take pile 
Now swap P1 and P2. It will work now. See, 12 Jenny, 23 Pile. So, let's do one thing. First print before swapping content of P1 and P2 and then after swapping. And before swapping, let's print and after that, call this swap function, right? And then we print this thing, right? So before swapping, you know P1 23 pile, P2 12 Jenny. Okay. So before swapping 23 pile, 12 Jenny, after swapping 12 Jenny and 23 pile. So I mean the values has been swapped, right? So this is how we can use swap function on pair, right? And one more thing I just want to tell you, if you will not initialize the pair, suppose, uh, this we have a pair p5 and we haven't initialized this thing and i want to print p5 values i haven't initialized anything and i want to print the values so it will print what bool and string i don't know let's run and see see one only zero it is printing right so by default automatically it will be initialized if you take int then it would print zero if you take string then nothing would be printed because because it is null character nothing would be printed because it is null bool yeah it's type of zero or one so it will like zero would be initialized so it will print zero if i take here rather than bool and string let me just show you here i'm taking int and float right and let's just comment out remaining things I'm just printing values of P5. See, it will print 00, 0 because int, it will by default initialize this to 00. 0. If I have one as a string, one is a string. So string would be, nothing would be printed in uh, at the place of string because it would be null. Only one zero would be printed. See, zero, second zero, right? So by default, it will be initialized automatically by null or zero, right? Next, we can use comparison operator on these pairs, also two pairs. If you want to compare like P1 equal to P2 or less than equal to or greater than equal to and these kind of thing, that is also fine. Let me just show you something. But for that also you have, you should have this, this you know, same data type. I have same thing, int string, int string. And P2 is this. So let's compare these things. Simply the name of the pair P1 and P2. So here I'm uh, checking for equality P1 equal to equal to P2. So it will, you know, compare this first with first, second with second. And obviously this is not equal. So it should give what? Let's comment out this line. False means zero. So output should be zero, I guess. Yeah, it is zero, right? or not equal to less than equal to greater than equal to these things we can do so it is your assignment you have to try out these things all the those operators comparison operators relational operators on these pairs right if i if i take here rather than uh, int if i take here float then what will happen let's see 12.34 in this case see the red line no operator matches these operands so because it will compare this this first operand of pair one with the first of pair two but both are of different data type so it will give error right, right? so it should be it should be here int so please try out all these relational operators not equal to less than equal to less than greater than equal to greater than on these pairs right p1 and p2 it is your assignment and you can just write down that thing in comment section right i hope now pair is clear to you guys like what are pairs why we use these pairs and how to use these these things right so now you have idea of vectors and pairs right so in the next video we'll see vector of pairs right so now i'll see you in the next video then bye take care